Good evening. Welcome to St. Pius X Church for the celebration of the Mass for the third Sunday of Easter. If you're visiting, we thank you for joining us. Come again anytime. Now please remember to silence your cell phones and stand and greet your neighbor. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries as we ask God again for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. with 
to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But this God has brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouths of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. 
My children, I am writing to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do, you que why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones. As you can see, I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the, new, in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a lot in the scriptures this weekend about people giving witness. So the gospel, as you probably can detect, is the conclusion of what happened on the road to Emmaus. The two disciples who recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Now they come back and they give witness to what they've just experienced. We have Peter and John in the Acts of the Apostles telling that they have witnessed the fact that, yes, although Jesus had been crucified, he is now risen from the dead, and they have seen him and been with him in his company. And so they, too, are fulfilling what Jesus had said at the end of the gospel. You are witnesses of these things. And we say, of course, 
because they were there. But the catechism of the church says it doesn't end with them. It also continues with us. We still have to give apostolic witness to the world that Jesus is risen. And so that means that we too must be having those experiences of the risen Lord that in some way touch our hearts and allow us to be able to testify from our hearts that yes, God is alive and God is active in the world. And so we can look back you know, we say, well, let's look at how the apostles encountered the Lord because God works oftentimes in the very same ways. He's very consistent in what he does. And so we know that just like the apostles, we too encounter our risen Lord in scripture. They, the apostles, of course, were very blessed to have the Lord Jesus break open the scriptures for them, to explain it to them better than any commentary that has ever been written. And so they began to see things in a new way. It wasn't because the word of Scripture had changed. No, as Peter says elsewhere, right, it's, it's the same Scripture. They read week after week, Sabbath after Sabbath. But now their situation in life is different. Their perspective is different. So they see the message in a new way. And so, for example, when Peter stands up in the Acts of the Apostles, explaining how he gave to a crippled man a cure that allows him to walk again, that makes him so joyful, right? He's able to say, it's because of Jesus. He himself knows that, yes, through the power of the Lord, here is the one whom Moses spoke of. Here is the one whom the prophets spoke of, that God would say, I will raise up a prophet after you, after Moses, you will listen to him. He knows that Jesus is that one. And because the Lord said, go and proclaim to the nations, he knows that what he's doing is because he's listening to that Lord. He sees it now. It's not just that Israel is meant to, you know, listen to God over and over again through different prophets. No, Jesus was the one. And you could even say that, yes, when Jesus came to them and said, peace be with you, they knew it didn't just mean, okay, here's your physical, earthly peace and goodness. No, it meant now God is at peace with me. Things had changed completely because they saw things in the light of the resurrection. Now, we too, sometimes, you know, because our situation in life changes, we can have the same words in Scripture, but they strike our hearts in a different way. So as you go through, you know, the tough knocks of life, and then you begin to say, now I begin to understand a little bit better how the Lord felt when he experienced these things and said these things. Maybe you say, now I understand the book of Job a little bit better, right? If you've gone through some tough times. It's because our life has changed, but God's word is always there, alive and ready to help us. And then, too, just like the apostles, we know that we encounter the Lord in our Eucharist because just as Jesus comforted them, dispelled their fears, helped to overcome their doubts by sitting with them, by having the meal with them after he rose from the dead. That here we hear he eats the fish to prove to them that he is indeed alive and resurrected. And that comes right after the breaking of the bread. So the loaves and the fishes, right, it all focuses again toward that Eucharistic celebration. We know that we encounter the Lord here. We might not be able to put our finger on it and say, here's exactly how I feel, but we know that when we come to this altar, we have a chance to encounter our, the Lord Jesus in the most direct way possible. And when we can't do this, when illness keeps us away, when other situations keep us away, we know that we miss it. That's the best way that God speaks to us and says, look, you, you need me in your life and you desire me in your life. And so we know we too encounter our Lord here in this way. Or also through signs. The apostles, they saw all the signs that Jesus had worked in his life. They themselves were able to work signs. Now maybe we don't have that opportunity, you know, when we say, I can't go out there and go up to somebody who's crippled and, and command that they be healed. But God does put moments in our life to where we recognize he did that for me and it was special. 
I remember an encounter with a young man one time at a parish where I was, and uh, it was a cloudy day. It was, it was sometime during the Easter season, and as I said the words of consecration over the host and raised it up and elevated it, the young man noticed that right at that moment, the sun broke out from behind the clouds, and he was struck with awe. And he, he told me later, he said, I looked around, and he said, nobody else seemed to pay any attention to that. He said, but it, but it really, it was a special moment for me. And I said, well, you know what? That was probably God giving you that sign, and it was intended for you, you in a special way. And so treasure that in your heart, right? God gives us those things where we say, yeah, there I know the Lord was with me. I know the Lord was speaking to my heart. When we can do those things, when we can recognize that God is here, then yes, we can give witness because it can come from the heart, right? So when people come up to us and say, you know, why do Catholics do such and such? You can say, well, thanks for asking. Here's what it means to me. We just testify what it means for ourselves from our own personal experience. That's how we can continue to be witnesses to Christ resurrection to his life, that he indeed still works in his church and through his church, still changing the world for the better. And so may indeed he help us to have that courage to always give witness to him through the way we live, through the way we speak, and especially now through the way we praise him at this altar. Let us then together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With faith and trust in our risen Lord, we bring him our petitions. For church leaders, may the Lord guide them in caring for the physical and spiritual needs of those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, May the Lord grant them fortitude in defending the dignity and sanctity of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are struggling in their faith, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, may the Spirit renew us in the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater awareness of the respect for our common home in building an authentic human ecology. May we be good stewards of the gift of creation in defending all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they rest in eternal peace with the Father in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, which are for the repose of the soul of Mike McLeod, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have made us into a holy priesthood. May you also once again strengthen us with your grace as you graciously answer these prayers, for we ask them all through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Blessed is he who 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, for the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Pius X, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who attend 11 o'clock Mass on weekends, please mark your calendars for May 5th. During the 11 a.m. Mass, we will have the First Communion. Now, our parish second graders is a rather large group this year, so they will take up a big portion of the church. All are welcome, but just plan ahead of time for a packed church, and we thank you for that. Father Lou will be going on a week of vacation, much needed. Actually, a retreat. Retreat, a yeah, retreat. retreat, not vacation, but <laughs> thank you. It's a vacation for me and Dee Dee John. There you go. <laughs> Uh, we will post the services for the week in the bulletin next weekend. A uh, reminder that St. Pius, the 10th Kindergarten Roundup, is Wednesday, April the 17th. Starts at 4 o'clock over in the school, I presume. And a reminder just to bring a can of corn or beans for the Christo Center. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. St. Michael, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.